The place is uh, very unexpected because you drive uh, from Donnini, a little village, on a very uncomfortable road. You get uh, through a wood and then there is a wall. Uh, there's a wall uh, covered with leaves and somewhere in the wall, a little door. And maybe on the door, there's Beatrice waiting for you. Um, and then you enter, and uh, it's very unexpected. It's something, something that I try to do in my movies, which is um, to go for something which apparently is a bit, um, let's say, um, low-key, with a mystery. And then suddenly you enter in, in the world of uh, Grisha and Beatrice, which is full of uh, uh, books, writer who made the books, writer who are writing the books, um, little dogs here and there, a beautiful uh, field behind the house which goes on a kind of Belvedere, where you can see a very wild part of Tuscany. Innumerable words of poems and novels have been written here at Santa Maddalena, a heaven secluded deep in the Tuscan hills. The writer, Gregor Borizzori, author of Memoirs of an Antisemite, the Death of My Brother Abel, and many other novels, lived and worked here for 30 years until his death in 1998. His wife, Beatrice Monti della Corte, has continued in the spirit of her husband's generous hospitality to friends and fellow artists by turning the house into a writer's retreat in the year 2000. It is as if Vorezori has never left. To these days, the place still breathes an atmosphere that inspires writing and the exchange of ideas. Magic is a term that's so overused as, as, as to have become almost meaningless. And, and yet, and yet, when I got to Santa Maddalena, it did feel quite literally magical. I am not an especially portable writer. I don't write in hotel rooms. I don't write on airplanes. I write in the room in which I write. And I was slightly apprehensive about going to Santa Maddalena, as I would have been apprehensive about going anywhere, really. What, what if I get there and I find I just, for mysterious reasons, can't work there? And I... I arrived. I, 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 bow, I bowed down in awe to the beauty of the place. I was shown to my impossibly lovely room. I had the top two floors of the signal tower. Uh, sort of set my laptop down on the desk. There was about an hour until dinner and I, I started writing which I never do. I never, it was actually a little, um, it was fabulous and slightly upsetting. What, what? Stop, stop, stop. You can't, you can't do this. You need days to settle in before you can start to, 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 to write anything. And really, really, I just felt in the presence of, of, of something. And I, I, I wrote a third of the, this novel in, in under four weeks. Writers from all over the world, but especially American writers, find something here that has long since disappeared in the outside world, an encounter with other writers, often from different cultures, but with the same purpose and passions. In Tuscany, this has been a tradition since the Renaissance. This alone makes Santa Maddalena 
different from all other literary foundations, to be invited to Santa Maddalena for a six weeks fellowship is an honor. A close friend of the Rizzori's, Bruce Chatwin, who rode here for long stretches between his journeys, established the tradition. Bruce believed in, in a movement and he believed to work in somewhere, somewhere w which possibly belonged to other people. He liked it better than to be on his, usually a writer wants their own desk, their own chair, their pen always in the right position. It was not like that. It was creating his ambiance wherever he went. Bruce was what was part of the of the sort of strange environment that we, that house suggests. He was coming back and back again, and he also wrote an article which is part now of a. I think it's a collection of story called "What Am I Doing Here," where he did explain why it was so good to work here and why he had the regrets not being there when, wherever else he was. And uh, so we start thinking that really this was a place uh, blessed for the writer in some way. And that helped me very much when Grisha died to think, you know, we should uh, sort of organize that in, in some way, make it more legal and uh, receive writer, who, not that many, but uh, with a certain sense of largesse, because, you know, if you put, uh, you change it into little rooms and it becomes, you know, institution, it's not good. So the life continued to be bizarre, but with an enormous respect for uh, the time of the writer and their freedom, they do exactly what they want. They just have to appear to the male, that's all. And uh, yes, it was in a way Bruce's model that continued. And this is how, time and again, encounters are made that broaden horizons. Here, Russians meet Irishmen, Americans meet authors from India and South America. But there are also filmmakers, actors, publishers, who visit for an evening and bring new sources of inspiration. I'd never been to a place like Santa Maddalena before, and I was introduced to Beatrice in Grisha when I was filming The English Patient. We were filming, I think, in Viareggio, and on a Sunday when we were not working, we drove over. And I remember the journey down the track to the house and being greeted by Grisha and Beatrice, and this extraordinary atmosphere of this hidden jewel of a house on this Tuscan hillside. I remember the charm of Grisha and Beatrice, and I remember this extraordinary atmosphere, unique, uh, a, a concentration of, of energy by the two people have cr had created in one house. Beautiful things, beautiful objects, um, but a place where you immediately felt that uh, the rest of the world disappeared. And it, a, a, something like a sanctuary, it felt like. I've finished in longhand, but I'm typing at the moment because um, I work in longhand. Um, a short story about a small town in Ireland in 1967. And it couldn't be further away from here. It's, it's October. It's a bad October. It's raining and there's wind. The emotions in it are very small, tiny, melancholy things. There, is no, there are no great churches or great buildings. The building I'm describing is a small house with a galvanised iron roof with four small rooms in it. Um, it couldn't be any different. So that moving from this beautiful house and this beautiful landscape and going to Florence and coming back here into this t into what's, ex what's in here, it, oddly enough, you, you get much greater power. You, you can concentrate much more on that thing when you don't have it around you. American writers who come to Santa Maddalena not only love the beauty of the place, they also appreciate discovering the rich history of this part of Europe, as well as the dialogue with writers from other parts of the world. America is 
tremendously insular and 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 very much turned in on itself. Every time I travel to another country, I I'm introduced to their major writers, many of whom I don't know about, many of whom are not translated. And it is of tremendous importance for American artists, American writers, to have a sense of the larger world, which is almost impossible to have while in America. You really have to go out into the larger world. And and one of the fantastic things about being at Santa Magdalena was meeting other people who were not American, who, who, who lived lives, and of course Beatrice, uh, who, who lived other lives in, in, in other places and had, and had, had common but, 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 but other concerns. I think you feel when you're here that you're not especially in Tuscany in any narrow sense, but that you're in Europe in some very broad sense. I mean, just looking at the books on the shelves, they're in every language. The place itself is so physically beautiful, too, without being pretentious. You know, one of the members of the Nobel Committee sort of raised a lot of hackles in America when he said something to the effect that American writers are too parochial, are too concerned with <clears throat> with American lives and American troubles to be to be really interesting around the world. And of course, American writers were not happy to hear that. I wasn't happy to hear it, but I have to say, I understand what he was talking about. Florence has been a great capital of the arts since the time of the Medici, who patronage attracted talent from all over. Once a year, the Santa Maddalena Foundation awards the Grego Vorizzori Vallombrosa International Prize for a foreign work of fiction published in Italian, an occasion which draws a crowd of world-renowned authors, literati, and society figures. She put me in the tower um, which is Bruce Chetwin's tower, and they had the top room which looks over the entire valley. And I was very, uh, you know, I'm very suburban by nature. I'm from a small bit of London and I hadn't travelled that much. And to open that window every day and you can see a kind of a Moorish castle in the distance and the forest of fir trees and the beautiful valley um, was incredible. And then I just started work and it was like all things when you're away from home, I was writing about London, but to be away from London uh, makes it much easier. The feeling of nostalgia comes back much more easily. Um, and then I would sleep every day in the room below it, which is particularly beautiful. It's a pink bedroom with candy-striped uh, wallpaper, like a Parisian bedroom for a child or something, <laughs> really beautiful. Um, and my work came very quickly, uh, much, much more quickly than I'd imagined. Uh, and just uh, for an English person, also the feeling of being in Italy is a great relief. You know, Italy's a traditional relief for English writers, for Keats or for Shelley or for Forster. It's a place where you can be uh, English, but more so. Everything is extended. <laughs> the food is better, the weather is better, literature is, um, has more looseness and less formality. So I think it was under the influence of all those things that writing became easier. First time I was here, I was with two Canadian writers, a couple, and uh, we had completely opposite sensibilities. They were uh, Beckett fans, so fans of, of minimalist prose. I'm at the other end. I love Nabokov, so it was a constant series of um, literary arguments, which was good. Other times I've been here with people who were molto simpatica to me, so uh, Michael Cunningham or John Banville or uh, Peter Esterhazy, where your your taste is similar. So every lunchtime is a kind of delighted discussion of the books you love and the, the things you like to do, and some exchange of work as well. And also uh, to find out writers' secret talents, like uh, Cunningham's a great swimmer, or 
uh, <laughs> Babel likes us a good song. You mean you, you find out that people are more than just their writing. So uh, that's beautiful. Um, but mainly it's a chance to be uh, uh, friendly with writers instead of in, in dread of them. You know, writers are naturally jealous and um, cruel to each other. <laughs> but when you're faced with another one, when you have to live with them for six, we six weeks, you have to become uh, friendly and you have to be sympathetic with them and to understand them. And that was, that's a great experience. I've made a lot of friendships here that have lasted. The hospitality of a private house and the art of the salon, long vanished elsewhere, contributes to the unique atmosphere of Santa Maddalena. Here, the meals are still prepared following traditional Tuscan recipes, using the produce of the garden, the oil of the olive grove, the way Gregor Vorizori loved to do. On some evenings, friends of the house come, among them publishers, actors, painters, Everyone is curious to meet the current residents of Santa Maddalena. Thoughts are exchanged, friendships are formed. It should be taken very seriously as a retreat for writers to interact and to, to work. And I think it's, it's a place of work uh, and, and a place of, you know, it's, it's, um, and, it's a, and it's a beautiful place, there's no question, but I think it, essentially it's a place where writers confront the blank page. Um, and you can't... Atmospheres are hard things to describe. They're things to be experienced. But I do think that, the, the, as we say in, in English, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And I think that we've seen substantial works by writers come out of this, this unique place. And I think that if we are to take writing seriously in an age where everything is being... In, made into shorthand and made glib and I think often shallow and uh, easy, I think that we have to protect a place like Santa Maddalena. There is nothing like Santa Maddalena. Um, in some places you go and uh, you feel like you have to write a story there. In some ways, Santa Maddalena is a story. It's an active place that has an, uh, has an amazing history that has been dedicated to, so successfully to, to writers getting their craft done. I had a very difficult novel I was writing about some corrupt uh, businessman in Eastern Europe, and I, I came to Santa Maddalena. I couldn't get a handle on this book, and within a first few weeks of living in the same space where I knew Bruce Chatwin had worked, uh, where he, he's, his own travels had become the beautiful uh, prose that he had written, it took me almost no time to start writing this book, and in the middle of, after six weeks, I felt myself sitting around with all these different characters around me, uh, imaginary characters, and at the same time channeling the energy of the people who had actually been there, uh, people like Bruce Chatwin and, of course, Gre Gregor von Rizzori, uh, who had worked so wonderfully there as well. There is nothing like it in terms of getting very good, very uh, atmospheric work done. And I think what happens especially that's interesting to me is the way Americans come alive uh, when, when they see this place, when they see a place that's not just the old cliche of a European place steeped in history, but something that's alive, that's full of energy, that's full of vitality, uh, and, that's full, and that attracts some of the more interesting writers in the world from around the world. If there is an, uh, an historian one day will trace its bits and pieces, I know it's not so much in the in a, in a world that which is in so disastrous circumstances. But at the same time, you know, if you have incredibly intelligent people who can work in freedom and in uh, community at the same time, here, I think it's a little tassel of something which is has to be preserved. I think that the Santa Maddalena needs to be there. I think it's absolutely necessary that it becomes an institution that regardless of um, who is there, that it's, it's always there for, for the writers, for people with ideas to come and sit and talk and, and, and express those ideas, whether it's in, you know, in plays or nonfiction or in, in fiction. 
I, I mean, I, I, I had such a good time at Santa Maddalena and I had such a great experience that I, I can't imagine not wanting other people 20, 30, 40 years down the line to also have that experience. The Santa Maddalena Foundation has become one of the most important places in the world for great writers and emerging literary talents, each of whom carried a unique spirit of the place with them forever after. Mm -hmm.